I have a ton of NBA 2K25 gameplay to share and go over with y'all in today's video. We're going to be showing and talking about the shooting in NBA 2K25, which will include the new go-to shots, the new rhythm shooting, the new shot meters, and the new high and low profile settings. We'll also be talking about the finishing in 2K25, including floaters, old types of layups, and the dunk meters. Of course, we'll be going over the dribbling too, where I tested a tons of NBA players' animations and tested old and new moves in 2K25. We'll also be going over everything on defense. Defense. I also tested a lot of the post scoring, which includes the standing dunk meter and the jab step. And lastly, we'll be going over the settings in NBA 2K25 as well. So let's stop wasting any more time and let's get started. So all I ask from you is to make sure to drop a like on the video right now and subscribe to the channel because we have a tons and tons of videos coming soon on early 2K25 footage. So let's go ahead and get into this video. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka Double H, back at it with yet another early 2K25 video. And as you can see, we're getting straight into the gameplay. Now, there are a couple things I'd like to say before we get into some shooting clips. And that is number one, that all of the NBA players had no legend badges, okay? So keep that in mind. Curry, LeBron, Lillard, Giannis, Embiid, Jokic, nobody had legend badges. So keep that in mind when watching this gameplay. Not only that, as soon as I topped into my first game and all of these games, I changed the difficulty setting in my other settings to superstar difficulty. So that's what you'll be watching it on superstar difficulty. And I have the second highest uh, profile settings on for the shooting. So keep that in mind when watching the gameplay. Now, one thing I will say, these are the, these first shooting clips that you're seeing right now are button shooting shots. So they're not rhythm shooting or anything like that. I'm shooting these shots with the button. And another thing that I noticed while playing and shooting, especially with Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant specifically, is you know how like when you shoot in 2K and usually like when you're trying to, you know, just stop and pop, you get like an awkward fade animation and then like you just time it badly or whatever. I felt like that wasn't happening here. If I was getting an off balance shot, it was, I felt like I had my feet set in, if it did turn into a fadeaway, it felt like my feet were set so the, the shot felt smooth okay and then other than that i would just my feet would stop in place to where i would shoot a standstill shot and off the snatchbacks like that clip right there the shooting just felt good it felt like i could get to my spot and take my shot and time my jump shot much easier than past two k's okay now you're gonna see a lot of clips of me like messing around with the dribbling mostly later on in the video when we get to the dribbling clips but right there you saw i was messing around with it i did hit it lightly contested and if you do look at the shot feedback the shot feedback's a little different it does not tell you the percentage it is contested it either tell it just tells you the pressure so it's gonna say tight pressure which is like a heavily and then it's gonna say light pressure which is like a lightly contested shot or it's gonna say open which is kind of like a ghost contest or it's gonna say wide open because you're wide open now right there that was a mid-range shot that was a crazy shot probably the only shot i hit all day while i was blinking with no energy kevin durant i'm telling you right now felt the best out of any nba player i use in this video you're gonna see a lot of clips of me using kevin durant he was by far my favorite player right there you see i get to my spot and that clip and another clip i'm going to show later in the video kind of reminded me of the right stick quick stop i know these probably aren't really fat you know these aren't fast quick stops so i'm not going to call them quick stops but it's like i was like flicking the right stick to the right and i was getting like a good animation to sh you know shoot out of it, if that makes any sense but now these are rhythm shooting clips by the way you probably just saw the lebron step back yeah it's in the game and as you can see there's two timings to these rhythm shooting shots so i'm shooting these with the right stick where i pull down on the right stick and then i flick up right use there you see i accidentally timed it but i missed so you have the only way these shots are guaranteed going in is if they're a double green if it's not a double green you can miss now right here i'm going to show that again because right here i try to do the rhythm shooting i pulled back on the right stick but i was so used to just going up on the right stick pretty fast that i shot a very early because i wasn't used to like the rhythm shooting in general so i ended up going to the learn 2k section where i was just spamming these rhythm shooting shots right stick down right stick up and you're going to see there's two timings there's one where the push timing because i'm on push you know when you can just like push jump or whatever and there's the tempo timing of how flat fast you flick up the stick after pulling down so as you can see i'm greening some of these tempo timings and you're gonna also see that i'm greening some of these push timings but if you don't green both it might not go in and keep in mind i'm on superstar difficulty and i'm also on the second highest shooting profile setting so i don't know if you have to go down in these profile settings for these one greens to go in because some of the one greens were going in but some of them weren't 
but the double green i know is a guaranteed of going in so when i say one green i mean like either i green the tempo or the push because right there i just shot from half court and green the push timing but it didn't go in but right there i double greened it from like nearly half court and made it now this now since i made that half court shot i really wanted to see how far you could shoot from that's why i was shooting for back there and here's a clip of jonos shooting with the button with hall of fame limitless range on hall of fame difficulty and he was also shooting from around the same spot that i made that right stick shot um with using the rhythm shooting so with hall of fame limitless range you can shoot from pretty deep i don't know how far you can shoot with red limitless range legend limitless range because we weren't able to test those badges because none of the NBA players have them. But as you can see right here, like once again, I'm greening a lot of these push timings. Look right there, I greened the tempo timing. So I timed it perfectly when I released the right stick up, but I didn't time it perfectly on the push timing. So I don't know, it's kind of confusing. It's definitely going to be hard to get used to at first. And I feel like there's going to be a certain profile setting you're going to you're going to want to use. Now we really haven't found out which setting is the best for this rhythm shooting because it's kind of annoying timing either the push timing correctly or timing the tempo shot correctly but then you don't time the other one correctly and it misses so it's like i don't know it, it's it's kind of annoying so you it's almost like what's the point if i'm not making whites off these because i'm on a high profile setting and now i have to time two things instead of one you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't, I, maybe it, you'll see more of like an advantage in park or stage or pro-am. But in the Learn 2K, when I was testing it in play now, I didn't really see a big advantage with it. Maybe just because I'm not good with it yet. But I don't know. Anyways, going into the go-to shots. You guys don't know what go-to shots is. It's basically when you hold up on the right stick and your player does a dribble move and goes straight into a shot. Now, there was Shea's uh, go-to shot. Didn't feel like it would made much space. But here's a couple clips of Jamal Murray's go-to shot. Now, each NBA player has their own go-to shot. I feel like Jamal Murray's is by far the best. I mean, look at this clip right here. Look at how much space I create with that go-to shot. I mean, I think Jam there's a lot of NBA players where it's just unusable animations with their go-to shots. But Jamal Murray's is definitely one you're going to want to write down. Because for my small guards out there, depending on how tall you can get this animation at, you're going to want to equip Jamal Murray go-to shot. If I look at who's the best one, here's Shays once again. That's just a bad one. I feel like if you're playing online against a user, you're just not going to get open off that move right there. We're also going to show some other NBA players go-to shots. Because once again, every single NBA player has their own go-to shot. Here's Kevin Durant's right here. I feel like this one would actually be good for some taller players uh smaller players definitely not but like he definitely creates some space off this like contact right here and then rises up i don't know maybe i'm just being a little like biased because this animation literally is what kd does irl it looks so smooth that's what's so cool about these go-to shots is they do look super clean and as an nba fan i really like them but a lot of them i feel like aren't gonna work online on an actual defender except for that jamal murray one i feel like that one's gonna be good like look at anthony edwards like that's just not gonna work unless you're just already wide open i also d used uh rob dillingham's I, I was just checking random nba players um go-to shots there's his like i don't think that's gonna create any space and bees is actually not bad for a seven foot plus player like i feel like that could actually work you know on maybe a couple mid-range shots depending on your build once again that just looks so realistic back to kevin durant gameplay i was shooting here's some step back jump shot clips bro once again kevin durant is making me want to make a tall build to start 2k25 because the way he was moving he felt the best out of any player i used like this dude is the most he gotta be the most overpowered player in 2k25 like i loved using kevin durant his fadeaway is still the same his step back jumper creates a lot of space i enjoy using his go-to shot his jump shot in general is easy to time. Um, but going back to just regular players' jump shots, here's just some random clips of random players' jump shots. If anyone's interested, there's Bam right there. Here's Jimmy Butler's jump shot right here. I was just leaving the AI wide open just to see them shoot. Uh, here goes uh, DeMar DeRozan's jump shot. By the way, if you haven't noticed, some greens are like super ugly like that one that go in. Like they just bounce in. It's kind of, I don't know, a lot of people probably won't like that but it does add some kind of suspense there's chris paul's jump shot here's chet holmgren's jump shot 
here is kevin durant's regular jump shot even though you've seen it a couple times already and here's victor women yama's jump shot not only did i test you know players go to shots players step backs players jump shots i also was you know testing a little bit of the fading the fading kind of felt the same uh it felt smooth i didn't have any problems with it uh i was it, now uh, one thing i will say is it is kind of hard to fade with the uh what's it called with the rhythm shooting and also like dribbling out of the rhythm shooting because like you're dribbling with the right stick and then all of a sudden you gotta do a rhythm shot with the right stick so that's just something i'm gonna have to get used to if if rhythm shooting does end up being worth it which might the way mike wang's talking about it it's gonna eventually be worth it if it isn't off week one he's gonna buff it if it's not good enough you know what i'm saying uh but yeah fading felt good i was back fading the curry fades were good uh right there that's that right stick move i was talking about early like i don't know if i'd necessarily say it's a quick stop because it does remind me of that 2k20 right stick quick stop but it's just not as fast and sometimes i couldn't get that animation to pull off but anyways trey young fade is also the same but now we're done with all the shooting clips we're moving on to the finishing clips now i was using Giannis for a lot of these to test the dunk meter and right there you see we missed the dunk meter now there's a lot of things new about the dunk meter there's the angle i took on that one this year instead of the dunk meter just having the same green, green window throughout the entire dunk it's actually going to change as you go up so right here last year you wouldn't be able to make this dunk the green window would be almost nothing because there was someone under the paint but ben caro was too far under the paint to the point where i had a good green window okay so those are two changes with the dunk meter, but not only that, the dunk meter green window size is dependent on the positioning of the defender, obviously, but also the height of the defender and the ratings of the defender when it comes to interior defense and block. So there's a lot of factors that go into stopping a dunk meter. Now you're gonna see me take a lot of different angles here and see me miss dunks, see me make dunks, you already saw me dunk right on Ben Carroll because he was in bad positioning under the basket. I was also running Bucks 2018 when testing this just to give some extra space in a five out offense. And honestly, I was getting some blow by animations. You're going to see some other blow by animations later in the video when I cover defense. And I feel like there are definitely blow bys at some kind of rate back in the game. I don't know. I don't really think they were that popular in 24, in my opinion. Obviously, they were really bad in 18. I don't think they're that bad. I just think they're more common than they were in 24, okay? But anyways, I'm using the arrow dunk meter meter on a large. So yeah, you don't really physically or visually see, yeah, visually see the green window. You kind of just time the dunk meter when your arrow meter disappears. So that's when you're aiming to time the dunk meter and i feel like i was timing mine really good so if i did miss one it's because there was just no green window because i took a bad angle right here i take a good angle get like great dunk meter animation and get the green right there right here driving baseline i miss it i don't know i mean i guess he had some kind of angle right there but it is what it is i also tested it with anthony edwards because he has like a 97 driving dunk which is higher than Giannis's, and he was getting some good animations as well i was getting a lot of like crazy dunk animations with anthony edwards that were in 2k24 as well like this one right here but they played good defense so he was in good positioning so i didn't get a green window on it but that that contact dunk from 24 there's two animations right there that were both from 24 that are also in 2k25 and yeah, I was on Superstar, so they got Giannis making contested mid-ranges right there. Um, but yeah, I was getting good reversed animations. But yeah, those are the changes with the dunk meter. Nothing too crazy. I feel like they just took the dunk meter from 24, made like three changes. You see even Bronny was getting some dunk meters. Um, and I think it, it's for the better. You know, the green one is going to change. The, uh, the interior defense matters, whatever. The defender was pulling me out of some dunk meter animations like that one right there and this one right here. But both times I made it and this time I actually greened it right there. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, I also like this random step through animation that Anthony Edwards had on a layup. But going in or going away from the dunk meter and going into floaters, y'all know that Devin Booker's floater animation was super good in 2K24. But this year, I know that Joe got one of the animations that he had in 24 in his 25 gameplay but there was just a lot of double clutch floater animations i was getting when i was going for floaters especially with devin booker that's all i was getting was this super slow floater animation and i know what i'm doing when it comes to the floor like i was spamming these d book floaters on a lot of my 24 builds and 
it just wasn't giving me them like it was giving me a lot of trash animations i also tested floaters with a lot of other players like sabonis because sabonis had a really good floater in 24. his animation isn't that bad in 25 but it's obviously ne not nearly as good as it was in 24. in my opinion i think trey young stephen curry and jamal murray have the best floater animations i also i tested it on them and i also tested uh chris paul's floater animations and shay's and uh floater animation and yeah i just felt like you know shay's is pretty good too but i felt like curry trey young and jamal murray's were my favorite ones i feel like they released the ball from a good you know distance out from the basket and not only that their animations were you know faster than a lot of the other floater animations and also went up higher and were just cleaner fluid animations compared to a lot of the other players animations and i also tested scoopers because you guys didn't know scoopers were really good in 2k24 you could really scooper with any layup rating and get the good animation with any layup rating and i was testing with d fox booker curry and scoopers are like back like they're like the same as 24 they're very good this one i get the offhand or the the same hand uh, animation right there there's the offhand one that animation is really good i grained it but he just blocked it but that's the animation that was in 24 that was super good uh there's a couple other animations that were super good this one was another one where they would contest it well but you would still green it so that's back in 2k25 this is another scooper animation that's back uh yeah all the good scooper animations are back in 2k25 do i know if you're going to be able to do this with a 34 layup on a center like you were in 24 no but i'm probably assume that it's just the same as it was in 2k24 uh, also standing dunks are back uh they also told us what rating you can unlock those standing dunks like that one right there were at like the ones that you could unlock at like a 40 and a 45 rating and all i'm gonna say is it's the same like you can unlock it at the same ratings and yeah it's gonna be back in 25 where you want to get to that rating on your guard bills just so you can standing dunk. Now it's time to talk about the dribbling. Now I'm going to show a couple clips right here where I burst out of animations pretty fast, like this De'Aaron Fox clip where I go to the opposite dribble hand and burst out fast. And right here with this Anthony Edwards clip where I burst out really fast to the same side. Now, honestly, those were the fastest bursts I saw while playing 2K25. And a lot of people were saying that were at Community Day testing the game, that they were struggling with dribbling and that's including everybody joe knows fana solo everybody was saying that they were struggling getting the dribbling down now i'm gonna show all the dribbling clips i do have from 2k25 um i thought i was struggling too because you know there was a lot of times where i was trying to dribble like it's 2k24 but you just can't like the inputs are different i was trying to l2 cancel couldn't do it i was trying to speed boost like i did in 24. it wasn't the same I was trying to do the 21 speed burst that was in 24, um, just a worse version of it. I couldn't do it. It wasn't in the game, but you know, I was trying to do as many things as possible. I was trying to figure out some fast moves while I was on the game. Now, this, before we go into some new stuff, let's talk about some old moves that were in 2K24. Jamal Murray behind the back, it's gone. You try to do it, he gets this terrible behind the back right there. That's that's this is literally what it is. That's his behind the back. It's terrible. LeBron James hop back is in the game. You see it, it's still in the game. So for anybody that wanted that gone, nope, it's in the game. In fact, y'all are probably gonna get a kick out of this. But Bronny James has the LeBron hop back. You're about to see it right here. Now this is leading me to wonder, or leading me to wonder, will LeBron have his own step back? where this is what he does and it's at a low ball handle rating i doubt it i he probably just has lebron hop back on but that could be something that happens now this is young Dirk's clip but he found some john wall crosses magic johnson has a similar crossover it's not exactly the john wall crossover from 2k24 but it's similar um he also and by the way yes this is the crossover in slow motion for anybody that wants to look at it it was the whatever crossover magic johnson had on deer and fox had literally john wall's cross or well it might be kobe's cross actually actually but yeah the same animation they're both the same animation kobe cross john wall cross whatever you want to call it it is in 2k25 not only that it's like tyree's hallow bird behind the back from 24 darius garland had it in 25 but yeah here are some clips of me like first getting on 25 and I was trying to L2 cancel because I could obviously L2 cancel in 24. But like, this is me trying, attempting to do it in 25. And it, it's just not a thing. 
at least to the effect that it was in 24 like when you do an escape move like that one right there for whatever reason i couldn't like dribble out of it it like no matter what i did it would make that escape move like its animation completely play out just like that before i ran out of it so look i couldn't just run like do an escape run to the right do an escape run to the left like it wouldn't let me do that like i tried to do it here with anthony edwards because he has a good escape in 2k25 it wouldn't work okay here's me in the learn 2k which i also was in learn 2k with a bunch of nba players trying to figure out the dribble moves i'm trying to do the left right l2 cancel that was in 24 or 24 it just doesn't work it makes you do this escape which you could you, you would do in 24 and then you would run to the left and l2 cancel back to the right with the escape with in 25 it just makes the escape play out now right here with shea i was getting like this opposite launch crossover this was like the best like left right thing that was like some kind of burst that i could consistently get but this is a clip from young dirk saying that he like was l2 canceling into like an escape move but even this this isn't like the you know what i mean like yeah you could l2 into like a move like this but you can't l2 like the way you could in 24 where you're just going left or right with an escape escape like consistently like it just wasn't working but now i'm about to just show a bunch of clips of me just messing around with the dribbles De'Aaron fox was definitely the fastest player like i was getting some pretty like good launches out of certain moves like the clip i showed y'all in the beginning of these dribbling clips so yeah De'Aaron fox definitely felt the best a lot of people were in agreement with me on that uh joe is talking about how De'Aaron fox and john ja morant felt the best with dribbling uh and i agreed with him on that ja uh, De'Aaron fox felt really good but even at that like I don't know a lot of people that went to community day are questioning the dribbling you know people are questioning if the dribbles are fast enough if there's any really good speed boost moves and I, I can agree with them on that I there was some moves that I did like but in general like fast burst moves there really wasn't much now in my opinion like those clips I showed in the beginning with the deer and fox um opposite cross launch and the Anthony Edwards same side burst move. I think there's going to be moves like that once we get our custom animations on that people are just going to find. And then like, because we, I just feel like we just haven't found those consistent moves yet. Because clearly I did them a couple times. We just have to find the animation and how to do it consistently. That's really it. But there are blowout dribbles once again. But this year, instead of tapping the right trigger, you have to flick up on the right stick while dribbling up. And yes, if you run a defender, you're going to get plucked. This also, this like Kyrie dribble style, this, this looks like the Kyrie dribble style from 24. I was getting that animation on like almost every player. Like Curry had it, Jamal Murray had it, Shea had it, Kyrie had it, Chris Paul had it, De'Aaron Fox had it, Kyrie had it. Everyone had that little like same side hezzy Kyrie dribble style type of move to it. So I don't know if just every small guard gets that or what. Another thing I want to talk about is snatchbacks. The snatchbacks were super clean to shoot off of. I feel like the snatchbacks are going to be somewhat relevant in 2K25. I loved Stephen Curry snatchback. Kevin Durant snatchback too created a lot of space. I don't know. I feel like those animations were kind of irrelevant in 2K24. They snatchbacks have been very good in other 2Ks though. And I feel like they're going to gain some sort of relevancy back in 2k25 i don't think they're going to be as op as they once have been in 2k but i still think that they're going to be somewhat good but this hop back cancel so if you guys didn't know you can cancel out a hop jumper so right here if you do this in 24 it would make you shoot it but you can pull the right stick down all i'm doing is holding the right trigger and pulling the right stick down and just running out of it you can run out of it fast you can run out of it slow and get a and let the animation play out but you can do this with any player you're going to see me showing clips like I am with Chet Holmgren right here. Players that are tall as hell who shouldn't be dribbling can just spam hop jumper cancel. And I feel like centers or just builds that are taller are definitely going to be using this to some degree. Now I'm just spamming it. I'm just messing around with it. But like if you actually put on your own animations and get good and find good animations to dribble out of these hop jumper cancels i feel like this could be something that is 100 percent used because like dude i'm just doing this with players with like no ball handle that have no business in dribbling like aaron gordon right uh chet holmgren you're gonna see me doing the joel mb 
you're gonna see me do it with just a bunch of tall players that just shouldn't really be doing stuff like this that are getting kind of fast bursts out of these hop jumper cancels if you run out of it right and if you let the hop jumper play out to a certain extent like look at him beat like bro he is seven foot one spamming hop jumper cancels and like sometimes i'd run out of it slow just because i'm like not timing it well consistently but like if you time it correctly like you're gonna see right here after this half spin like right here like look at how fast i move out of that on a seven foot seven foot one player like that's kind of crazy i was even doing with kevin durant who's much faster i feel like the hop jumper cancel is definitely going to be useful in 2k25 because i really wasn't doing much with it like you could if you put custom jump animations on and you have some kind of speed like i feel like you can make it look way better than i was making it look right there um but anyways yeah so hop jump cancels are in 2k25 and then here's just a bunch of clips of me messing around with the dribbling right here oh back in 24 right if you hold the right trigger and flick the right stick down you would get just a regular step back animation like something simple like the Devin booker one but right there you see curry he does like multiple moves when you do his step back so like Stephen curry so like some nba players are gonna have like multiple moves they do when you flick the right stick down while holding the red trigger so Stephen curry had a lot of moves like a couple different moves like a little behind the back as he kind of move trey young has this like hezzy where he like carries the ball like that right there and kind of like does that little hop jumper to like the other side uh anthony edwards has a similar step back to stephen curry where he does a couple different moves at once so yeah there are some animations or some step back animations where they do multiple different moves um at the same time that just kind of like play out and you can run out of them during the move just like you would with like a regular or aggressive breakdown combo right so yeah i was messing around with a bunch of different nba players you see Kyrie, halliburton booker ant um just trying to see their animations their dribble moves see if they got any good moves that to look out for a lot of people said that they liked using shea in play now and look at chet holmgren's behind the back like bro what i feel like he has no business in having that good of a behind the back uh so maybe for any tall centers out there you might be able to get whatever behind the back he has equipped because he's like seven foot something and he had that good behind the back on so that's kind of crazy uh, Devin Booker had some good animations where he could run out of these drill moves and run to the opposite ball hand and get a decent burst out of not 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 anything that's like super fast or anything to be freaking out about but it was better than a lot of the other players that I was using that's for sure um but yeah I was just messing around with these players and learn to get there's that animation I was talking about right there with Anthony Edwards where you flick down on the right stick while holding the right trigger that's the animation he gets right there um, you can shoot out of it pretty quickly. It's kind of like the snatchbacks with Curry and Durant that I was using earlier, where if you shoot out of it, it just feels smooth. It's easy to shoot out of. You can shoot out of it during the animation, at the end of the animation. Whenever you want to shoot out of it, it just cancels the animation. You shoot immediately. And once again, there's that little, little random burst, same side burst that I found randomly. I feel Once again, I feel like people are going to find bursts like this using certain animations. Once we can put custom animations on, and then I feel like people are going to find the good drill moves and then it's going to spread like a wildfire and it, the dribbling is going to be fine. But yeah, a lot of people are probably going to be dropping their gameplay videos talking about how the dribbling is not good. It's not as good as 24, but y'all can see by a couple clips here, not many clips, that there are some good speed boost burst moves that you can run out of fast that I think people are going to find pretty quickly and we're going to be fine with the dribbling once we do find those moves moving on to the defense now y'all know i'm going to keep it 100 with y'all no matter what you know i said i like the shooting i said that i like the changes to the finishing i said that i thought the dribbling was 50 50 but the defense there's some bad things about it for sure and that one of them is the interior defense the interior defense got a downgrade from 24 in my opinion for sure uh, i feel like the interior defense is super inconsistent like sometimes like right there demar Derozan or someone in the paint just throws up some bs when the shot clock's low as like a prayer and sometimes it just goes in and those shots would just never go in in 24. um so i felt like there was just a lot of like just chuck up shots in the paint that would go in and then stuff like this where like i'm behind him but then it doesn't go in but like then you're directly in front of him and it goes in so it's like it's just not consistent the blocks felt fine like i was getting a block when i was supposed to 
I didn't really test chase downs enough to really comment on chase downs. Right here, you're going to see a crazy block from Wemby. That was insane. Um, I feel like height still definitely plays a huge factor when attacking the basket as an offensive player. Like, you're going to see right here, like, Wemby has a mismatch, then gets, like, guarded by some dude smaller than him. It's just an open, which that's how it should be. You know, he has the mismatch. He's taller. He sh that's how it should be. But there's a lot of times where it's center on center and he just throws up some stupid stuff like right there and just goes in like i don't know it feels like defense is very rng when it comes to the interior like look at jimmy Butler's making a heavily layup and that's what i didn't like about it like i feel like in 24 you could wall up in the paint paint center on center and he's not making some contested shot in there 25 i felt like it was 50 50 that's not how it was and the steals in 2k 25 huge nerf there's no on ball plucks like there was in 24 okay that's not gonna be a thing if you're a lockdown and you want to get steals you're gonna have to get blitzes you're gonna have to you hope the offensive player just dribbles into your foot or you know you're gonna have to hope that they just throw a bad pass and it's a lane interception because those plucks in 24 are gone it's not a thing in 2k25 pluck city is officially gone so if you're a guard that was tired of getting plucked you're not going to have to really worry about that in 2K25, in my opinion. Another thing to, uh, to worry about is kind of just the bumps. Like, I feel like there were some times where I was getting good bumps, and then sometimes I noticed just some blow-by animations. Like, how is Evan Mobley blowing by LeBron like that? You know what I mean? Like, it's LeBron. It's not like he's just some small dude that don't got strength or something. Like, it's LeBron. Why is he getting like this clamp breaker animation? But then I also would notice sometimes where if you dribble too close to the defender, you're just going to fumble the ball. And if you're close to being out of bounds and you dribble too close to the defender, you're going to fumble it out of bounds, which is a good thing. I think that's a good addition. But they also said that there was like a new mechanic with defenses sliding. If you flick the right stick to the left, right. Honestly, I didn't really notice a difference with it. It just felt like I was playing normal defense. So I personally didn't notice that new mechanic at all. So defense, I, I feel like it, it got a nerf in general. Like it's not rewarding defenders as much interiorly. And then the plucks are gone. So the defense isn't going to be as good with that. But then the perimeter defense got better because, you know, these bump animations and these pickup animations happen a lot more often. Moving on to the post scoring. Post scoring is always overpowered in 2K, so this should be no surprise. But we do have a lot of clips to show y'all. So right there, we're double team. You force into a bad shot, miss it, just how it should be. But then there goes one of the only two heavilies I made all day at Community Day, and both of them were when I was post scoring. I mean that shot should just never go in, but it's some. I guess it's dropping sometimes in 25. And yes, we're on superstar difficulty. Right there, I get forced into a bad shot and I miss. That's how it should be. Right here, I get double team immediately, shoot a post hook, get my own rebound. I feel like I shouldn't even be in position to get a rebound right there. Drop step, get the easy lane. Remember, Bam is guarding me. So like, he's one of the best defenders in the game for this, okay? Right here, post spin right off of him. Get wide open off that for an easy dunk. And that is on the probably the best post defender we could go against in play now because we couldn't use historic teams right here drop step with two people guarding me i pump fake a couple times and get ripped that's how it should be i like how we're, i'm getting ripped off those pump fakes that's good even though i was double team that is good i shoot a post fake or post hook get you know the ball right back on the offensive rebound once again i get ripped so that's another good thing we're getting he's getting ripped in the post usually it doesn't happen too often uh with post scores in 2k right here though i got the mismatch you got a guard guarding a post score you're still going to get thrown to the ground on a drop step do i think he should be go thrown to the ground like that probably not do i think he should get bullied out the way 100 percent. and there's my second heavily of the day that dropped only two heavilies all day was when i was post scoring then i tested out some ho post hop shots uh and they were just like they were in 2k24 community day you know i was making some deep ones in 2k24 community day i was making them again in 2k25 community day we make a lightly contested right there we shoot another one right here creating a lot of space off them that one looks like it's contested but it's not ends up being an open so yeah post scores once again even though i missed this open run right here they're looking just as good as always. Victor Wibben Yama got Tobias Harris on him. That's an easy standing dunk meter. So even if he's in the way on the standing dunk meter, once again, it's just not going to matter. If you're in the dead zone, 
if you have a smaller defender on you you are going to green that standing dunk meter now the problem though in the past was people would jab step to create even more space to get the guaranteed standing dunk meter and we're going to go over that jab step in a second here but first we're going to continue to test the standing dunks right there i didn't even have to meter it and i got an and one standing dunk with wemby but once again wemby's just op as hell in this game i mean he's also seven foot four so you're not going to be able to create a player that is as tall as Wemby in the my player builder right here Jalen Duran's on him it looks like there's a guard on him but no Wemby's just that tall I started post hooking with Wemby and every post hook was just open like I don't think a single one of these were contested I did no matter how many times I spammed a post hook uh they were just always open right there another standing dunk but yeah once again we're gonna go into the post with Jokic and we're going to test out the standing dunk meter into a drop set. Now, there's a guard guarding me. So once again, he's too small. That's even though he's right on me, it doesn't matter. He's too small. And his interior defense probably sucks. So we're just going to standing dunk meter right over him, which is how it should be. Now, once again, people used to spam jab steps in Pro-Am at 1v1 core. It was a huge problem, right? Right here, I tried to jab step. Doesn't work. Got off. It's a three second violation. And basically what happens if you try to jab step in the paint in 2K25, it is just going to make you pump fake. So no, you cannot jab step in the paint in 2K25. That exploit is thankfully and finally gone in 2K25. So that's a huge W by 2K. All right, now we're going to end off with the settings. So in the actual settings, there was really nothing to change except the game difficulty, which I was on Superstar the entire time. Usually you can change like your shot feedback under there but that wasn't there either. So we went to the controller settings and the first thing I did before I even recorded anything was change my shot timing profile. Now the low pro lower profile you go, the more whites you can make, but the lesser green window is. And the higher profile you go, the more or the bigger your green window is and the less whites you make. Now I was on normal risk reward the whole time and I made like literally no whites. I don't even think I made a single white the whole time. So I think I'm just, after playing at community day, I may as well just go high risk reward and go and make my green window bigger and still make basically no whites. So that's what I'm gonna do next time I play 2K25. I put my shot timing visual cue on push. You're gonna be able to uh, customize that in the my player build, but they it didn't let us here. Uh, you probably saw real player percentage there too. That's only for offline game modes. And the only way to change your shot feedback settings to all shots is in the customize uh, HUD. And that's the only way to take your shot meter off too and adjust all those settings. So you have to go there and you're going to get, you know, you can customize where your shot meter or your green effects are, what the sounds are, all that stuff. But you can change your shot meter. There's arrow, there's ring, and there's dial. Those are the three shot meter um, options. I would go arrow. I would also make the size large. I would personally take the shot meter off for shots. I left it on for layups and free throws, and then it's automatically on for dunk meters, but that's really it for the settings. But anyways, if you guys thought this video helped you out at all, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more early 2K25 videos, and make sure to click the videos on your screen. I probably already uploaded a 3v3 Rivet City gameplay, and there's probably already some build videos up for 2K25 on the channel. As long as you're watching this video past August 28th, 11 a.m. Eastern, there's build videos on the channel. So what are you waiting for? Click my channel, go watch some more early 2K25 content. It's been your boy Henry, aka Double H, and I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.